Hi, it's Mark Bossert, producer of the Pollock Automotive Podcast. And of course, we're here with Mr. Bernie Pollock, Pollock Automotive in Vancouver, 19 time winners of Best Auto Repair in Vancouver, as voted by their customers. And we're talking cars. How are you doing this morning, Bernie? Doing very well. So today's victim is a 2004 Mercedes SLK 32 AMG. What was going on with this vehicle? So this fairly rare vehicle came to our shop for a pre-purchase inspection, uh, which we did. Uh, the uh, purchaser uh, ended up buying the car, so we did some service work on the car as well. So this is an AMG model. What differentiates it from the regular model? Well, on, so for this particular, for the SLK, the, you know, the, the major difference is, is the uh, supercharged 3.2 liter V6 engine, which is a pretty awesome feature. That's, I mean, that's definitely the biggest feature of the, of the uh, AMG also. You know, it has nice sort of trim pieces like, you know, tail, fancier tailpipes. Um, it looks like half, uh, half of an SL tailpipe assembly just with, on one side. The, uh, you know, it's got the nicer AMG wheels, wider tires and wheels. And I'm not certain on this car exactly what the other features are. It's, it's, it's a little more basic than, say, an SL55 is compared to an SL500, but definitely has some, you know, beefed up suspension performance uh, enhancements. But the engine is, is really the big thing. What is unique about SLK series compared to SLs or other Mercedes? So, so the SLK um, is, is basically a, a smaller version of the SL series. And uh, I don't have the actual German translation in front of me, but there's uh, S, S is, you know, roughly translate to sport. The L is light. And then the K is short. Um, and it's interesting because if you look at the other Mercedes line, you have your GLK, which is basically like a shorter, smaller version of a, a GL series. So uh, there's a German term for it. I'm not going to try to butcher it or anything. Porsche is about the best we'll go on the show until I learn some more German. Um, so this, so this particular, so what I find unique about this SLK car is, is that right up until um, that they made the car from 1996 to 2004, and even up to 2004, it's got some features that you wouldn't really, that you don't see in uh, that era of Mercedes. You know, most Mercedes, they have uh, electronic keys, the infrared keys, um, rack and pinion steering things like that this car has this car still has a, a mechanical key it's a it's a much simpler version of a car it's got a lot of the 19 earlier 90s technology that's kind of just kept on going so some people may say it's a bad thing i think it's kind of i think it's kind of neat it makes the car a little simpler um and remind this reminds me more of like a kind of a, a fancy mazda miata um you know just in terms of, of of how the car is um so let's just look at have a look at some pictures so there's our um, SLK. It's looking a little car. As you can see, it's got, got the AMG wheels. It's a hard top convertible as well, which is, which is awesome. So it gives you the ride when you're driving in, on a rainy, cold day. It's just like having a hard top car, but you can take the roof off and then you have the, the benefits of the convertible. There's our 3.2 liter supercharge. Look, if you're looking down at it really quickly, it really looks a lot like, uh, look, looks a lot like an SL55 engine, um, except it's, of course, two cylinders shorter. And... Uh, it's about 350 horsepower, which is, a, which is an awful lot to pack in this little car. It's, about, I think, about 32 or 3,400 pounds. It's about 1,000 pounds lighter than an SL55. Less, less power, but uh, certainly enough to move this car really, really fast. The key I mentioned. So this is like a, this is really, this is a 2004 car, but this key is really a, a very, very 1990s Mercedes type of key, uh, you know, with a regular uh, switch blade style key and the regular, regular toothed uh, basic ignition steering is interesting this is a I mean it's hard to see a lot with the details of this picture but this is basically the view of the bottom of the steering box so this vehicle actually has a steering box not rack and pinion which of course is not quite as as good in a way as, as rack and pinion steering but it's kind of it's interesting that it has this type of technology and of course the car steer is fine and it's a lot simpler uh, in construction than, than an SL series in terms of the way the uh, geometry the lower control arms which were actually one of the items we replaced due to worn bushings, it's just a, it's just a simple um, wishbone style control arm as opposed to a lot of the newer ones where they have two control arms in the bottom and two at the top. Um, I mean, it, there's advantages to that, but less. this has less parts and pieces. It's, it's, as I say, it's, it's a simpler, it's a nice car and it's simpler. And then here's our interior layout of the car. 
I know there's something else I want to point out about the interior layout of the car that, that, that again, is kind of a simpler throwback, but for some reason, I can't think of it at the moment. So anyways, there, there's, the, there's the basic interior layout of the car, and uh, there we have it. What services did you do on this car? Yeah, so the uh, so some of the th we did a, we did a number of catch up maintenance items like a fuel injection cleaning and some uh, uh, fluid changes, drivetrain fluids, uh, the lower the uh, control arm bushings and some of the steering linkages had wear, and also the tires were worn out. So you know our uh, pre purchase inspection helped them to negotiate the best price, and then from there we we repaired the vehicle and got it back in really nice shape. And uh, I mean it was. It, you know, I, I actually drove the car myself before, before he bought it and it, the car drove really nice, but you could certainly feel the front end was, was wobbly and, you know, didn't quite handle well. And then afterwards, of course, it's just, the control was amazing. Um, and of course, tires just make such a difference. And how reliable are um, SLK cars? I, I find them fairly reliable. I mean, they do need, you know, the odd thing here and there. And it's a, it's a little more, you know, I'm saying it's a little simpler than a lot of Mercedes, you know, the technology is a little older, but of course it's still got a lot of electronics. Um, you know, some of the repairs we've done besides basic maintenance and the, you know, the, the more basic SLK, uh, you know, we've done supercharger replacements on those. We've uh, had convertible top issues with some simple wiring repairs. I think we've, we've, you know, we've done podcasts or videos on these, but um, overall it's, it's a pretty reliable car. And I think it's a nice, I think this makes a nice, you know, if you're looking for a nice little semi-luxurious little sports car, this is a this is an excellent car, especially the AMG model because it's got some really good performance. So there you go. If you've got an SLK or a Mercedes in Vancouver, the guys to see are Pollock Automotive. You can reach them at 604-327-7112 to book your appointment. If you have to call and book ahead, they're busy. Or check out the website, PollockAutomotive.com, YouTube channel, Pollock Auto Repair. And of course, thank you so much for listening on the podcast. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Mark, and thanks for watching and listening. We really appreciate it.